Hello all, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be going through a cross-compilation tool, MinGW, on some of its basic compilation usage. We will explore how we can perform cross-compilation with MinGW on a Kali Linux machine in order to produce a Windows EXE binary. We will also look at how we can modify the Windows EXE binary assembly information and also how to embed custom resources such as an icon image into the EXE binary file. As a bonus, we will also also be showing how you can embed an encrypted metapreter reverse shell payload as well into the Windows EXE binary resources section, resulting in the bypass of Windows Defender. Without further ado, let's get started. As shown over here on our Kali machine, we have a very simple C++ code that prints out Gemini cybersecurity. Let's compile this using MinGW to produce a Windows EXE binary. We can see that the compilation is successful and the Windows EXE binary is produced. Now, let's transfer this binary over to our Windows machine and see if we can execute it successfully. Awesome, it worked. This is on a very basic level how you can use MinGW on a Linux machine to compile and produce a Windows binary. As shown in the screen, the binary produced will have this default icon and the assembly information under details will be basically empty. If we are doing the compilation on a Windows environment with an IDE such as Visual Studio, it is pretty straightforward to make changes and modify the icon image and the assembly information as well. Since we are using MinGW on a Kali Linux machine, let's see how we can make changes to the icon image of the .exe file and also the assembly information. Following this reference from Stevens, we can see that the answer is already clearly listed. We can simply follow the example provided here in order to achieve what we want. Let's copy this demo.rc resource code file over to our Kali machine. For this demonstration, I am going to leave everything as it is. Feel free to make any changes you want to the assembly information listed in the .rc file. Looking at the icon section in the .rc file, we can see that we will need an icon image file in the working directory to be named demo.ico. This will then be set to the icon image of the exe binary that we will be producing. Now let's search for a random ICO file to test it out. Let's test out this Facebook icon from icon-icons.com and see if it works. Now we should be able to compile the demo.rc resource file using winres. This is a Windows resource compiler. This should produce an object file. Let's name it demo.o. Now let's use the MinGW G++ compiler again to recompile the binary. We will need to include the demo object file which is our resource file now. Let's transfer the new hello world.exe binary over to our Windows machine. Nice! Our exe file now has a Facebook icon as its image. Obviously, you can change it to whatever you want, maybe a harmless looking document image icon instead. Besides icon images, we can also embed a file into the exe binary itself. This technique is shown over here on the irate team website, but it is using Windows Visual Studio to do so. Let's demonstrate how we can do that on the Linux machine itself instead. Let's generate a shellcode with MSF Venom. The shellcode will perform a reverse shell back to our Kali machine on TCP port 8443. Now let's try to embed the shellcode into the exe binary file itself. This can be done easily by adding it into the demo.rc resource file. We can just follow the declarations similarly to how the image icon file is being embedded in. Let's name this bin instead of icon. Alright, now let's copy the code from the irate team website. The code uses the find resource, size of resource and load resource APIs to retrieve the shellcode data from the resource section. It will then allocate some memory for the shellcode, write the shellcode to the memory allocated and direct execution to the shellcode.
Alright, this looks good. Let's compile it and transfer it over to our Windows machine. This is most likely going to get caught by Windows Defender as the MSF Venom generated reverse shell shell code is in clear text. Windows Defender should be smart enough to pick it up even if it is in the resource section of the exe binary file. Okay, as expected. Now, what can we do to circumvent this detection from Windows Defender? Well, it should be pretty obvious that we can try to perform encryption on the shellcode. This should allow the ESE payload to land on this successfully, and if we are lucky, we can execute it as well. Let's give it a try. Let's reuse what is already available publicly on the internet. From the Fowler's PE Loader GitHub repository, we can make use of the AES.py Python script to perform AES encryption on the MSF Venom generated reverse shell shellcode payload. This Python script will take in one argument, which is the file that we want to perform AES encryption on, and the script will then output two files, a cipher.bin file which is the AES encrypted version of the payload, and a key.bin file which is the AES key required to decrypt the payload. Now, we can simply embed both the AES encrypted payload and also the key into the EXE binary as resources. We can use the same resources related APIs to retrieve the AES encrypted shellcode and the AES key. We can then perform AES decryption and finally execute the shellcode. Let's first head over to the C++ source code to copy the necessary code. We will need the AES decryption function in our source code only. One interesting thing that I have noticed is that Windows Defender is pretty insane on this AES decrypted function. Let me show it to you. Even if the code is totally not malicious, if you have this exact AES decryption function in your code, Windows Defender will scream Metapreter and trigger a detection on it. This is pretty crazy. As shown over here, empty.c++ has nothing but the decrypt AES function in it. Obviously, this is not malicious, but it is still triggering a Metapreter detection on Windows Defender. This is crazy. We will need to make some minor changes to this AES decryption function and everything will be good to go again. Okay, this looks good. Our source code now has the modified AES decryption function and the main function that fetches both the AES encrypted shellcode and the AES key from the resource section of the EXE file. It will then perform AES decryption, allocate some memory, write the shellcode to memory and then execute it. This should do it. Let's compile it and transfer it over to our Windows machine and see how it goes. Awesome! As shown over here, we have successfully bypassed Windows Defender, obtaining a reverse shell back on our Kali machine. There is no detection on Windows Defender. All references shown in this video will be provided in the video's description, so be sure to check it out. I hope you all have found this video to be interesting and useful. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. I have recently created a free fishing course available on Udemy. This fishing course is completely free and it is only about 30 minutes long. Several fishing techniques and popular tools such as Goldfish is demonstrated in the course. The link to the free course will be available in the video's description so be sure to check it out. I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye!